A campaigner for men's rights, who's been described by some on social media as a woman hater, is standing as an MP in Ashfield. Mike Buchanan says feminists are liars and conspiracy theorists and says the state is sexist against men. He's standing against Gloria DePiero, the shadow minister for women and equalities in Ashfield, and he's here to tell you more. Mike, welcome. What Thank are these so-called lies that feminists come out with? Well, we, we, we have for about 18 months now been presenting uh, prominent feminists with Lying Feminist of the Month awards. And I had the pleasure this morning of being on ITV's This Morning on the, on the sofa with Caroline Criada Perez, who we've presented two awards. N for saying? No, no, for, well, well, the first one was, was to, she, she lied about the impact of more women on corporate boards. And, more, and by uh, that you mean that this uh, claim that women on corporate boards improve profits? That's, you that's, don't think that's true? Well, it's not that I don't think it is. All the evidence says that that is not so. Well, so. So we challenged her and she has had no response. All the longitudinal studies that we're aware of show that women do not improve corporate financial performance. It's really clear. Well, that's interesting because you'll pick your studies and those that are no, in support no, no, of you will that, pick theirs that no, actually no, suggest profitability no, no. does increase. I'm sorry, Fran, it doesn't. Everything that they present, they present uh, studies which show correlation, and correlation is not causation. It's kind of statistics 101. Uh, and it's why See, nobody in the world challenges our assertion, um, that, which, uh, is, we, we, which is that women do not improve corporate financial performance. And we have been, we have been challenging um, people for three years on this. Okay. And Would you like to keep them out of the boardroom? Of course then? not. That, that's, that, 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 so what's that, your that, beef? That, no, sorry, Fran. That is that is a shaming tactic. The idea that um, that I would want to keep women out of the boardroom. Why would you resort to a shaming tactic? Well, why would you bring up the fact that people are saying that women are an advantage in a boardroom when you're saying they're not? I mean, but they're not. But, but the facts say they're not. In fact, five longitudinal studies that I presented to the to inquiries of the House of Commons and House of Lords showed yeah. that show show international studies show that when you increase the proportion of women on corporate boards, on average, corporate, for, p corporate financial performance declines. It's really black and white. So, Mike, let, let's talk about your views and your policies without going into longitudinal studies. You believe that in a workplace, men work harder than women. It's not what I think, Fran. It's to do, it goes back to a study or a report in 2000 by Dr. Catherine Hackim. Um, a world-renowned sociologist, and she, she, she published a paper in, in, in 2000 called Preference Theory. And preference, she found in Britain that four out of seven men are work-centred, and work here being paid employment, and only one in seven women is work-centred. Women want balance in their lives. They Why does that suggest that in a workplace a man is working harder than a woman? That simply says that given the choice, a woman would like to look after children more than men, perhaps? Well, of course. Well, but why does that mean that women don't work as hard? Well, if women want to, work, want, want to spend more time with their children and with their families, as they do, compared to men, that will necessarily have an impact on their advancement in the workplace. You know, choices have consequences, and women have to realise that if they want to spend more time with their kids and family, which, which, which I applaud, there's no reason they shouldn't, but they then cannot expe expect to be 50% of FTSE 100 directors. OK, interesting point. Let's go on to one of your policies, which suggests that when awarding custody to men or women, men should have half the time with the children, yes. women should have the other half of the time. Yes. How does that fit with four out of seven men being work-centred and one out of seven women? It's, well, if you look through that, again, it's, it's one of 20 areas in our manifesto. But, but, but the idea is that's a starting point. But, but, but the these men, if they're centred on their work, no, no, they, you are assuming uh, that, that men want to have primary care no, of children no, for half of the time. No, it's a starting point. And, but the reality is for most um, men and women with children um, that, the, that the, they will come to an, or, or could come to an accommodation where the women spends more time and with the children, and there's no problem with that. So, 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 so um, yeah, so, so, so we're perfectly happy with, 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 with that arrangement. I mean, men and women can come to arrangements, but, but, but the point I'd like to make here is that the family court system currently denies fathers access to their children. 95% of, of, of parents who don't get to see their children are fathers, um, and that is emotional abuse of children 
fathers and grandparents. And you'd like to see that, that redressed? I'd like to see the emotional abuse of children, fathers and grandparents re redressed. Yes, I would, Fran. And finally, you don't believe that feminists have a cause. You think that it's outdated and redundant. In fact, we are sexist against men. No, Just I, ten seconds left to uh, make that of, point. Of course feminists have a cause, and their cause is female supremacy, and they are driven by misandry, which is the hatred of men. You've chosen Ashfield to stand in. Why is that? Um, because it's, a, it's one of three highly marginal seats, adjacent highly marginal seats uh, near Nottingham. Um, and it's, as you say, Gloria de Piero, uh, Minister for Women and Equalities. And the, uh, the, 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 the sheer name, you know, Minister for Women and Equalities, is absurd. There is no minister for, 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 for men. So um, you think there's inequality but actually men are the victims of it. Yes, indeed. I mean, our, our, our election manifesto shows 20 areas where men, are dis men and boys are disadvantaged by the state, by, by, the state's inactions, by the state's actions and inactions. And for five years now, I've been asking feminists to, to, to point me to one area where women and girls are disadvantaged by the state. And in five years, not one suggestion has come forward. Perhaps they would believe that there is a, a long-standing institutional prejudice, there's been an unlocking, if you like, of the power that they believe men have held and therefore there, you know, there doesn't need to be a state prejudice in their favour. This is all about redressing the balance. That's what feminists are well, after. But you think that they well, are... Well, if, you know, if we're going in for um, retributive justice, um, then we should be giving, um, I guess, black Americans a white slave each. Let's talk about Nottinghamshire. Let's talk about Ashfield okay. then. Why should the people of Ashfield vote for you? Have you been to Ashfield before? Yeah, of course. And of so course. why should they vote for you? Because we are the only um, political party in the country, and in fact across the English-speaking world, that, uh, that fights for the human rights of men and boys. And in particular, uh, I guess our number of the 20 areas in our manifesto, pr pr probably the biggest is, is, is the denial of fathers access to their children following family breakdowns. Is uh, this something you have experience of? No, not, not personal experience, but, but I know plenty of men who've, who've, uh, who, who've, who've been denied access. And in fact, our candidate in Broxtow, Ray Barry, um, heads up Real Fathers for Justice. And denial of access to children, uh, to fathers, is a major driver of male suicide. And anybody who works in that field has known men kill themselves. But it is, all, it is also um, emotional abuse of children who, who, who don't see, you know, boys and girls who don't get to see their fathers, uh, of grandparents who don't, who don't get to see their beloved grandchildren. And, and that's, why, that's one of the reasons we have so many female supporters. You acknowledge that men are more concerned with working in their They're lives. More, more work driven, yes. Work centered yes. than women. Yes. And on that basis, you say that therefore women don't work as hard. How? No, no, no. I'm saying not That's as many women. Today, no, not as many. Not ago. as many women work hard as men. Four times as men. Four, four out of seven. While they're in the workplace. Yes, I mean four out of seven British men are work-centred, and only one in seven British women. That has to have consequences for. What does work-centred mean, though? When it, it comes to the thing that most gives you pleasure, is that what the no, question it's to is? Do when with it's, pay, work it's to do with paid employment. So, so, so I'm still not clear. You're saying that that women have a desire to be at home more than men. Yes, it's perfectly Women have a desire natural. to look after children more than yes. men. And yet you want men to have custody of children in equal no, proportion no, no, to women. No, um, we went through this before. That, that's a starting point, but I'm saying that, that in the case of most couples, most couples could, could come to an accommodation where the woman, you know, t spends more time with the children. And uh, that is just a natural way. You know, uh, you know women are happier to do that and in fact uh, um, study but after what? study study after study shows that although men and women would 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 both prefer to work less hours in, in paid employment women would far more women would, would would prefer to work a lot fewer hours because they want to spend time with children and family it's, so there's so no I problem here yes so, so in other words when judges are giving women more time with children than men I can't see why you're saying that that isn't a fair assessment then of the lifestyle and the choices of men and women. No. Would men want to be the primary carers of children and go to work and sit in traffic 
and plan the menus at home and take the children to school and so no, on? No, clearly not. But no, our, our, our beef is about um, access to children more than custody. And the reality is that fa family courts um, deny fathers access to children. We, we have supporters who've spent over £100,000 trying to get access to children. Some have succeeded, some have failed. It's a lottery. Um, okay. But how many men can afford £100,000 to see their children? It is cruel. Mike, I'm sure we'll talk some more and the voters will make their own minds up. They Thank will. you. Thank you. It's so stupid, it's positively brilliant. You know, they asked the question, should men comment on women's bodies, right? And American society has kind of created that system where men are always talking about women's bodies and vice versa. Like, this is... The home of beauty pageants. Miss Universe, Miss USA, Miss America, yeah. Sports Illustrated Swimsuit Edition, Ebony Jet uh, Jet Beauty of the Week. You know what I'm saying? Right. Like, it was, it was, it's always a thing yes. where we're commenting on a woman's body or even women are always commenting on men's bodies. D'Angelo did a whole video butt-ass naked Ooh. with a six-pack. He didn't do that because he didn't want y'all to comment on his body. That's you know what I'm saying? Point. So it's just like, I That's guess a in a lot of cases, you got to take the good... With the bad, right? So if somebody sees a body they love, mm. like a J-Lo or a Trina, whoever it is, they commenting on it. If you see a Michael B. Jordan or D'Angelo back in the day, you comment on it. Yeah. But if you see something you don't like, eh. And it goes both ways for men and women. It's not like guys don't get shamed for having the big-ass stomachs and looking nasty and yeah. fucking shit. You know what I mean? That's why you see a lot of guys getting in shape. It's guys right now that clown the old Gucci man. I mean, it's girls that clown the old Gucci man because yeah. of how he used to look. But Gucci looked at himself was like, that's not what I want to be. I want to get in shape. So I don't, I think that's just kind of the American way to judge people by their bodies. I think it's a human way. I think it's a human way. Yeah. I think that we sexualize things that we want to have sex with. That's just natural. And, and I think maybe women do it in a little bit different way because they can sexualize certain parts of the body that maybe we don't care as much about. Yeah. But, you know, women are very um, picky when it comes to height. You know, like there, women will just straight up say on their dating profile, nobody under five six. <laughs> Michaela, Michaela is five eleven, mm -hmm. and we'll say that all day long. I don't short, I don't date no short men. And if we were like, yo, no girls with no titties, now you're being a you're, fucking, you're objectifying you're her, objectifying, you're being us chauvinistic. Exactly. Uh, There's a double standard. Yeah, it's There's a double standard. But the reality standard. is, we do have standards. Yeah. Right. And standards are actually okay because they're baked into our DNA for like you know, thousands of years of evolution. Like yeah. we like certain things. We like um, nice, I guess, nice skin or like uh, supple breasts. All these things represent, I think when a, a woman is ready to produce children, I think fertility, right? So all these things mm -hmm. are, they're not like, Hey, I'm a shallow guy. Even that is a judgment of a woman's body. Yeah, hundred percent. You see a woman, you're like, oh, she's got subtle. Sup? What'd you say? Supple. So I was about to say subtle. Quiet titties. She got, she got quiet. <laughs> she's got quiet titties. <laughs> she's got supple breasts. So, but you back in the day, you probably looked at her for fertility reasons, like, 100%. oh, she's ready to mate or whatever it is. You that, know what I mean? Hundred percent. That's judging a woman's she body. She is ready. Yeah. 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 Fucking slave masters used to judge. People's bodies. I don't talk about that on Black History Month. Charlotte, please. Charlotte, please. I mean, come on. Is, what are we doing? What are we doing here? I'm you know just saying I mean? it's kind of it's this weird, man. Dude, like it is this this is interesting. I was in um I was in uh, Hawaii, which is this fucking amazing place. Everybody should go to Hawaii. Outside of like the natural beauty, the culture is super unique and interesting. And um, but they were talking about the uh the the sugar cane plantations out mm -hmm. there. And there's these documents that you can read where they're looking at the type of people that they want to bring in to work the fields. And they're going through the different countries and seeing how they would work and wouldn't work with the fields. For example, they brought the Irish in. The Irish can't take the heat. They're too tall to bend down and do the whatever. Um, black, black uh, people, ah, they can, they can take the heat, but um, they're too tall to go down and be picking up the cane, so they don't work as well. And then the Filipinos, ah, perfect height, they're shorter leg, da da da. Yeah. They, they made it a science. Judging people's bodies. By judging people's bodies. Yeah, it, yeah, it's yeah, literally yeah, like yeah, the yeah, NFL yeah, combine yeah. or like the uh, NBA. Yeah. They, they had the exact same look at it. What is the most efficient group of people yeah. that we can bring in here to get that job done? Let's be honest. The only reason we don't like when somebody judges somebody's body is when they're saying something negative. 100%. Because if they're telling you how fly 
how you look and how beautiful you are. You got fat ass, man. You got nice breasts. Mm. Like, I, 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 in the morning, these young ladies, Taylor, Sim, they walk in. Oh, look at fat. Oh, you got a fat ass, fat ass. I'm like, they do that. So it's. But you're still judging each other's bodies. No, you know what? This is not fair because um, Sim and what's the other girl's name? Michaela. Sim and Michaela both like pussy. No, not Sim. Sim. Oh, so Michaela. (laughs) (laughs) My bad. Label me a lesbian. (laughs) My bad. My bad, Sim. But Michaela likes pussy. So if Michaela's like, you got fat ass, she means it. (laughs) That's sexual harassment. That's sexual harassment. Because if you would sexualize, if you sexualize someone, that's sexual harassment. It's like, that's no, a good point. And anything that you find sexual about someone else, don't you think that we should equate this? Anything you find sexual about someone else that you're sexually attracted can count as sexual harassment. For example, if a girl goes up to you, if a girl values uh, financial success mm-hmm. and she goes up to you, she goes, okay, Charlotte, I see that watch you got on. That's a nice little Rolex. You are sexually harassed in that moment because she sexualizes <laughs> your financial security. Sexually? Really? It turns a girl on, a guy that can buy a watch like that. <laughs> financial security. <laughs> um, hey, there's a point here, is it not? A little bit. Bro, I love the brilliant idiot hot take. It's why we the brilliant idiots, That's baby. why we the brilliant idiots, all right? You know what I'm saying? Whipping dicks out. Where the bucket's at? I'm trying to fill one. <laughs> <laughs> and if the bucket don't work, I'm gonna stick my fist in it with the rolling attached there to we it. Go. That's what turns her on anyway. Let's go. <laughs> you tell me what time it is. <laughs> no, all I'm simply saying is the judging of people's bodies has been going on before us, and it's gonna go on way after us. Yes, that's just the way it is. And, and I'm not saying it's a good thing. I'm not just saying saying it's a bad thing. It's just a thing. So to say, should a man comment on a woman's body? I don't know. I really don't have an answer. I just know that's the way things are because women do it to men. Men do it to women. Men do it to other men. I learn from women. You know how women be saying, oh, you got a fat ass to each other and big teeth. That's why I objectify men. So how you do it to men? I do it all the time. What do you say? I do. Oh, I kill M Easy and Envy and what'd you say to drama? Me? Oh, all types of shit. Like what? I'd be like, I want to. I told drama's drama's got a beard. Yeah, yeah. I'm gonna brush your fucking beard. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> it just seems nice. It seems like a nice thing to do. <laughs> and drama would be like, yo, you weird, bro. <laughs> it's the truth, though. I tell him, I tell him he pull his fucking pants up. Why? Because he's I'm, flirting? I'm t- exactly. Yeah. Tired of seeing your little red box of briefs that I've been watching for the past nine years. Yo. Pull your goddamn pants up, Envy. <laughs> Envy okay. really got no ass, huh? Do some squats. Yeah, no cheeks, no cheeks. He got no cheeks. No Yo, cheeks, Envy, bro. do some squats, no bro. Cheeks. Long back, ba- long, long beige back. back. You know long I mean? beige back. How you gonna bust it wide open when mm. you got nothing to bust? Nothing. And that's why he shows it off so much. He like to he like to do push ups. You know what I'm saying? With his Come pants on, sagging. Bro. And he'll, he'll lift his shirt up a little bit so all his ass is out. Come on, You know what bro? I mean? We're and then wonder men. why your motherfucker saying shit. That's it. What are you wearing, Envy? What are you why wearing? Why would you wear that why if you don't want me to say something? Thank you. You're, you're, y'all missing the, the real point of it all. Though. What's the point? What's the point? Because, like, for me, Sam and McKenna to do that, we're all friends. See, that's what's wrong with y'all. We ain't talking about y'all. We talking about dicks over here yeah, right now. Yo, See, why, why would you even jump into this conversation? Real talk, we man. We're having a nice gay moment, and here you come wanting to add some goddamn women to the mix. This dick talk, Get the pussy fish. talk. Dick talk. Dick talk. Dick talk. Let's go. Exactly. Let's go. Let's stick to that shit. You know come what on, now. Fuck shit. out of here. But y'all are friends, too, though. You're not going to do it to a random guy on the street. Oh, who says who? <laughs> See, I won't walk up to some random guy in the street. Do you tell him you got fat ass? Are you saying you need me to push this culture forward? <laughs> Are you telling me I need to take this to the streets, Taylor? <laughs> Is that what you're telling me? You, if you want me to objectify these guys for real, for real, real talk. You want them to feel the pain that you felt your whole entire life. Let's go. You want me to go out there with these Tims and these jeans on and start catcalling motherfuckers? If I wasn't a married man, I'd take you up on you. <laughs> Black man no cheat. Black okay. man no cheat. You know what I'm saying? I read that in a book a long time ago, though, From Niggas to Gods, man. What? That was the name of the book, From Niggas to Gods by Akil. And he said he was talking about how guys objectify women and catcall women and comment on women. And he was like, what if fucking Mike Tyson was walking the streets doing that shit to dude? Yeah. Slapping him on the ass, catcalling. What would you do? Hey, you got it, Mike. You guys never had gay guys do that to you? 
Yeah, but not as crazy. They just they usually lock in with some eye contact. That's all. And then they try to see where you're at. Yeah. This is what gay guys do. They'd be like this. They'd be like. <laughs> then they wait for you to do something back to let them know it's okay. Not the gay guys, but they'd be like, uh, 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 Charla, I know you just ain't gonna walk by here with that little fat ass Charla and not come speak to me. Wait, what? <laughs> gay guys, do you know that talk like that? I need to meet these gay guys. You even put his hand on his hip like a little teapot. Did you see that? Please tell me we got passionate. <laughs> I'm Charla. <laughs> I'm shot. I see you got yo, rips in your jeans. Uh, yo, a gay teapot would be funny as hell. I'm is a there a teapot short in stuff? Where, Where is, is my dick? dick? Here, Here is, is my, my mouth. mouth. <laughs> <laughs>